Welcome to the daily word for the season of Epiphany. Today's reading is from the letter of James, chapter one, verses twelve to eighteen. Blessed is any one who endures temptation. Such a one has stood the test and will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love Him. No one, when tempted, should say, "I am being tempted by God." For God cannot be tempted by evil, and He Himself tempts no one. But one is tempted by one's own desire, being lured and enticed by it. Then, when that desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and that sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. Do not be conceived, my beloved. Every generous act of giving, with every perfect gift. Is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of His own purpose, He gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruit of His creatures. This is the word of the Lord. Who have I been tempted by? Mum woke up in the middle of night and felt thirsty, so she got up and went to the kitchen to get some water. When she passed by her daughter's room, she saw that the light had been left on, so she looked in to see what was going on. When she found her daughter eating cup noodles in her room, then asked. Why are you eating cup noodles so late at night? I was asleep, and I smelled the aroma coming from the living room. I saw my brother enjoying a cup noodles, so I made one for myself. Your brother is eating cup noodles in the living room. Mum rushed to the living room in a fury. Why are you still eating cup noodles, son? Because Dad is having one, so I want one too. At the same moment, Dad came out of the kitchen with a cup noodles in his hand. Dad, I was looking at the cup noodles, and it was like they were saying to me, "Eat me, eat me." So I ate it. It is not important whether the story is true or not. But to bring out the common problem of the world, when things are revealed, the human instinct is quick to decide that the blame does not lie with us. Recently, read the court news in Hong Kong. At the end of a case, the prisoner is given a chance to plead his case. Some prisoner will give up. Some will make a final declaration, and some will try to plead for mercy, hoping for a reduced sentence. But sometimes, when I hear some of the reason for pleading for mercy, I really don't know whether it is a plea for reduced sentence or a plea for an increased sentence. I've heard the following reasons. Because of the social events in the recent years, I was under too much pressure and committed a crime. Another said that I have been promoted recently, but I cannot handle the pressure and committed the offense. The one who committed the drug offense pleaded for mercy. Saying that he has served the community for twenty-seven years, and had arrested drug dealers many times. If you were a judge, would you give them a reduced sentence? In the Bible, there are examples of shirking responsibility as well. The first story is the forbidden fruit. Of course, 
when God questions Adam. Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? Adam replied, "The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate." And Eve said, "The serpent tricked me, and I ate." Do you see the power of the responsibility not on our side? Adam replied, "The woman whom you gave." This means that he accused God of not being good enough to give him a bad woman. Eve replied, "The serpent tricked me." Again, it was a creature created by God. That tempted her. We people seem to have inherited this quality of shaking responsibility, which ultimately falls on God. There are three main points in today's meditation. First, anyone who endures temptation will receive the crown of life. James encouraged believers to persevere in the face of trial, and eventually they will be rewarded. Which was a boast to the believers who were persecuted at that time. Second, God cannot be blamed for temptation, for God is not the source of temptation; He is the source of goodness. Third. That temptation is born of your own desire. As believers today, we are still faced with the temptation to check our responsibilities, remembering that this temptation is born out of our avoidance of responsibilities. May God be gracious and help us to live holy lives. Let us have a time of reflection. Wherever we are questioned, what is the first response that comes to our mind? First, admit and apologize, or shaking responsibility to someone else, or any other ideas. What should I do if the next temptation comes? Let us pray. O、oh、Lord, help us when temptations comes. Let us stay firm and to receive the crown of life through you. Amen.